Hello, and welcome to our fourth installment of the uh, J.A. King series of webinars. And today our focus is going to be on material testing. And underneath that umbrella, we're going to be looking at force measurement. So today we're going to show you three different types of force measurement uh, pieces of equipment and uh, how they perform. We're going to go from manual systems all the way to fully automated. You're going to see some of the systems behind me in action. And uh, with that, I'm going to introduce you to Matt Youngblood. He's our resident expert on force measurement and how these stands work. I'll turn that over to Matt and uh, put him in capable hands. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. So today we're going to go over force and material testing. Um, we've got all kinds of different equipment uh, from the Starrett company. Uh, so what our purpose is today, we have a lot of customers that will reach out to us and say, I'm looking for a force gauge or a tensile tester. And what we've seen over the years is that uh, a force gauge or a tensile tester uh, can be totally different uh, depending on, you know, what you're used to, where you come from. Uh, you know, some people refer to all of this equipment here as a force gauge. To some people, this is a tensile tester. So our hope today is to go over the different kinds of equipment, talk about uh, their capabilities, the applications where you might use them, and then hopefully you'll come away from this webinar with a better understanding of what's available and what would be uh, the right fit for what you're looking to do. So before we get into the specifics of equipment, uh, we're going to talk about what the difference is between force testing and material testing. So force testing is when you want to see how a part reacts when a force is applied to it, whether it's seeing how much force it takes to open or close a lid on a container, or whether you want to see um, how much deflection you have when a force is applied, or how much force is needed to achieve a certain deflection. When we talk about material testing, uh, that's whenever we want to learn more about the uh, material characteristics of a part. So we'll use some more advanced technology later on in the presentation to go over material testing, but uh, material testing is uh, commonly uh, used if you want to see how elastic part is, how ductile, how brittle it is, um, the rate at which uh, the uh, part changes, um, you know, not only just how much it takes to break, but maximum stress, breaking stress. So um, once we get into that later, uh, we'll show you some different tools that we use to do those calculations. But for right now, we're going to start with uh, basic force testing. So the first thing that we're going to look at, and I'll uh, give you just a quick zoom in on the uh, display, but this is a handheld force gauge from Starrett. And uh, these are probably the most familiar and most common instruments for doing force testing. Um, these are commonly rated in tension and compression. Um, as you can see here, I have a hook here, which we would use for a tensile test. Um, these can be mounted in a variety of orientations. Uh, you can do the testing manually, just pulling or pushing on whatever you want to test. Uh, these are also available to be mounted onto a fixture. Uh, there are even motorized stands where you can take your handheld gauge and uh, mount it to the stand. You can set the speed and then have the operator uh, drive the stand, uh, which would give you the benefit of um, the more repeatable, uh, higher force testing. So um, this equipment uh, here it has the capability of giving me a live readout on what my um, force value is. It can also capture uh, peaks, and it can give me the average data. Uh, we actually had a customer yesterday who called us and said that they had some force gauges, but they realized that they needed something that would give an indication to the operator during the test to tell them whenever they have uh, reached the target force value. Um, so we've gone ahead and we've taken this gauge here. Uh, we've programmed it so that it will give us a beep whenever it reaches the peak uh, tensile value and it will give us a deep also whenever we reach the low tensile value or compression value. Um, other instance of a more advanced test that we can do with a handheld force gauge, uh, we can have it set so that once the gauge reaches a minimum force value, it will actually start a timer. So an example of when you would use that is, let's say that you have someone that's recovering from an injury or some surgery, and you want to do some physical therapy to help them recover. Uh, we can have this set so that the person would uh, pick up something, maybe a bucket or some other object that they would use, and uh, once the gauge recognizes that they've reached the target value, it will start a timer. So that way we can see how long they'll be able to hold it, and we'll be able to monitor progress. Of course, you could use it for all kinds of different applications, but that's just a quick example of um, a pretty general application. 
Um, as we discussed, these gauges can be mounted to the stand. Um, you can do it so that it's mounted to the stand and you manually drive it. Uh, one unique thing about the uh, stair gauges is it has the capability with the output here to actually integrate into the stand and we can drive the motorized stand off of the handheld gauge. So what's really nice about that is uh, you get a gauge that you can integrate with a test stand and you can have one interface and a compact footprint to uh, precisely drive it to a peak load or to a uh, distance. And then conversely, you can just take the gauge off and you can take it out onto the production floor, do some testing there. Uh, we have some customers that will actually purchase this instrument and, uh, you know, an engineer will put it in a travel case and take it with them to a customer site or somewhere else where they'll be able to do some testing. So uh, these gauges are extremely versatile. That's kind of one of the pros about a handheld force gauge. Um, this is an entry-level piece of equipment, so it will come in at the lowest price point. Um, we'll also get the benefit of being really versatile. We can build a fixture to it. We can use it in our hands. We can use it in the motorized stand. Um, and then, of course, the portability is great. Uh, some of the drawbacks about this, um, it is nice that we can use the uh, gauge with our hands. However, one thing is is uh, we do give up some repeatability. It's very hard to get someone to pull at a constant speed. It's even harder to get multiple people to pull at the same speed. Um, additionally, uh, you know, the, the gauge can only read as much force as applied, so getting someone to put a higher level of force may be difficult for certain people. Um, We've also got uh, the capability of doing some tests. However, uh, this gauge is limited into the certain outputs. We've got USB and serial to hook into a computer and RS-232, uh, but our data analysis real time is fairly limited. Um, and uh, we also won't have some of the tools that we're going to talk about later when we look at some of our PC-based system. Uh, specific to Starrett's product line, they have two models of handheld gauge. There's the DFG, the digital force gauge, which is the basic unit, and then there's the DFC, which is a controller-based unit, and that's going to be more advanced. Um, both of the gauges come in capacity ranges from 5 to 550 pounds. The uh, digital force gauge DFG, the basic unit, has an accuracy of 0.2% of capacity. The DSC has an accuracy of 0.1% of capacity. And additionally, uh, the DSC is the unit that would be able to perform some of the more advanced tests as well as drive a motorized stand. So uh, moving from the handheld gauge over to an automated system, we're going to zoom in on um, the machine to my left. So what we have here is a Sarat FMM550 frame. Uh, you'll see that we've moved from a handheld force gauge to an S-beam load cell, just like the handheld force gauge. This is uh, calibrated for tension and compression. Um, and we've got what are called compression platens mounted onto the stand right now. Compression platens are going to be what we use for uh, doing a compression test. You'll see on the side of the frame we have a scale there so that we can manually uh, register the distance traveled. Um, that's great for quick and easy setup. If you have a handheld gauge mount into the system, you can do that. Once we get the uh, system connected to a PC, like this tablet PC that we've got here, uh, we're able to use the encoder, which is inside of the frame, to get uh, automatic, automatic and uh, real-time distance measurement. So uh, Chris is going to load a uh, styrofoam cup onto the machine. And we're going to demonstrate right now how quick and easy it is to perform a test. So Chris is going to hit the start button there. And as you'll see, the crosshead has already started moving downwards, and we started to apply force to the cup. So uh, looking on the monitor, and it might not be really clear from far out, but um, you can see that we've got a graph here which shows our load over distance. We can change that and do load over time, distance over time. And we can also go over here, and instead of looking at the graph, we can look at the uh, values that we want. So I wanted to know what the maximum load was, and so it's providing that. On the left side, it tells me that this last run was 38.9 pounds. And then over here, I've got the data from previous runs that I did. Uh, we've also gone in and set a tolerance, so you can have it so an operator quickly loads um, the part onto the instrument, hit start, and it's going to tell them if it passes or fails. So you can get someone with practically no knowledge of the instrument itself uh, to go ahead and put up different parts on there. We'll get incredibly repeatable data. Uh, the machine's fully operated off of a precision motor. Um, we've got, you know, a high-precision load cell and uh, the encoder. So 
you know, we're going to be able to get great data no matter who or when we take the, the uh, data. So, uh, and the advantages that we've got in a motorized system like this over a handheld gauge, uh, repeatability, we can do more complex testing. So we can do compression tests, we can do tension tests, we can do some cycle testing. I want to apply a load of 10 pounds five times or I want to uh, pull something to 20 pounds of force for 30 seconds, however you want to do it. Um, the tests that are uh, programmed in here, uh, Steric, the L1 software already comes with some templates, so it's going to be very easy and very quick to program whatever test you want, whether you want to go to a load, a distance, a break percentage, or a cycle. Um, it's got a lot of uh, uh, prompts in there, uh, excuse me, some steps that are built in so that the uh, machine will automatically zero itself out, so very little operator input. Uh, so, the advantages that we'll get with this machine additionally are the high throughput, uh, the more complex testing, and the automation. Um, also, this is a very rugged design here. So we get, um, you know, a lot of life, a lot of use out of this one piece of equipment. Some of the drawbacks that we have with this compared to a handheld gauge, uh, these are not intended to be portable. Um, you can move it occasionally, but uh, realistically, uh, you would set the machine up and then uh, the operators would bring parts to the machine. So whether it's in a quality lab or on a production floor, uh, this would be dedicated to wherever it's installed. Uh, unlike the uh, handheld force gauge where we can just pick up and start measuring tension and compression, uh, this does need to have a test built. And while the tests aren't very complex, um, you would need someone who's somewhat familiar with the software before they can go ahead and start performing tests. Um, and, you know, there are some more functions, uh, more equipment involved with it, so there is a higher price point for this as compared to a handheld gauge. Um, in regarding to the Sterrett product line, there are uh, three different frames. We have the 110, 330, and 550. Uh, so those numbers stand for the uh, load capacities. A 110 is 110 pounds of force. A 550 is 100, or excuse me, 550 pounds of force. Uh, in terms of travel space, the standard units come with 22 inches of vertical travel. If you need more than that, they offer an extended travel model, which gives you 32 inches. Um, and these uh, units are compatible with all kinds of different load cells. So the load cell that we have on the machine right now is a 550-pound load cell, right, for higher capacity testing. If we wanted to look at a uh, higher resolution test on a lower capacity application, we can use all kinds of different load cells. Uh, these frames are compatible with load cells ranging from 2 to 550 pounds of force, and the accuracy is 0.1% of capacity. So uh, stepping back, we've talked a lot about um, force testing to this point, and now we're going to dive into uh, material testing. So. Um, We've got the uh, camera has got it set up now. We're going to look at the first sample that we've got. And um, I've got a plastic stir straw here. So uh, earlier we did a compression test on the uh, styrofoam cup, and now we're going to do a uh, tensile test on a plastic straw. Um, also, we're going to get it set up so that you can look at my screen and uh, you can see my software. All right, so now we're going to hit start. Um, what my software is asking me to do is uh, put in some of the information about the sample. So when we were talking about uh, material testing, we want to know about how the material composition of the part, how it reacts, uh, what changes. So uh, to collect that data, we'll need to put in some dimensions. So I measured my straw here with a dial caliper, um, and so I've got these fields put up here. If I wanted to skip this step, because I know that my uh, Samples are always going to be the same size. I've got that capability, but for today's demonstration, I wanted to see that you can put in the different um, uh, dimensions. Additionally, um, I use the dial caliper, but if you have digital gauges, uh, such as drop indicators, calipers, micrometers, uh, it can even be a scale, whatever you want to use. Um, if you have uh, the correct cable, you can actually hook it into this computer and you can have that data go automatically. So it's going to go through faster and you also reduce the risk of the operator accidentally typing in the wrong number. So now that I've got the information that I need for the test in, I'm going to hit done. So we just have a quick sample prompt here. Uh, it says, thanks for joining the webinar, and after three seconds, our test takes off. So now you'll see that it says, remove a broken sample and press yes. So I programmed in the software to put a pause step after the sample breaks 
so that I can take it out. On a plastic straw like this, it's not really a big problem, but if you had a metal part, say like a copper tube, uh, that will uh, stretch, it will change its uh, shape, and it will become hard, so we wouldn't want the machine to come back down on that sample as it could potentially damage the, the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my straw out. And I'm going to hit yes. This is a touchscreen computer. I can hit yes or I can click it. Okay, so the uh, machine is returned home. It's ready for the next test. Um, I can go ahead and load another part. One thing you'll see is we have a curve here, um, but we don't really have any data called out. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go ahead and show our post um, our post-test data collection tools. So what Starrett has done in their design here is instead of programming machines to perform a test and tell me what data I want, uh, we can program that uh, information up front or we can come and do it after the fact. And I'm going to show you really quickly uh, some of the measurements I might take on a part like that. So I just clicked on our slope tool, right? And so uh, slope is used very commonly for finding um, uh, load over distance. And I'm going to use my best fit slope tool. And so you can see I've got my lambda here for slope. Um, and so it's giving me the, uh, the slope curve. And it's going to give me the yield value. So that's a very commonly sought uh, parameter is yield. Um, as you can see, it's popped up on the screen. I can move it around to wherever I want it to. Uh, some customers may not recognize the lambda symbol, but they do recognize yield. So I'm going to change the name there. And click out, and as you'll see, it's going to automatically update on my screen. Um, you can select whether or not it shows up on the screen here. You can change whether it shows up in our um, our graph down at the bottom, our chart, and then uh, after the test, we're going to show where it shows up on the left hand side, All right? So um, as you can see, I uh, didn't have the yield field available for the previous test, uh, but now that I've selected it, it's actually gone back and it's collected all that data. So whether we did it earlier this morning or whether we did that test six months ago, we're going to be able to collect data that we didn't have before, which is great if you have product that you're sending out and you think that, okay, it's passing the one parameter that we've got for it, we're good to go. Um, if you had a recall, and wanted to look at some other parameters to determine what the problem was, you've got all that data now and you don't have to start from scratch. So now that I've got my yield in here, I'm going to look at a couple other parameters too. Um, I want to look at my maximum stress. All right. And again, if I want to change the name, I can. All right. And I'm going to put in a tolerance here so I can tell my operator, just like on the other stand, uh, if the part passed or failed. So I'm going to put in tolerance of 4,000 to 5,000. Okay, so just like we had before where um, we were able to calculate yield on all the tests, you'll see that the parameters are listed here in the chart, and we can see parts that passed and failed. You'll see that I've got um, strain calculated here. I don't really want to see strain today, so I'm going to take that off. Okay, and now if I want to look at my uh, fracture stress and strain, I can go ahead and click on that over here and um, click Save. So um, let's say that um, I want to uh, measure a point along the graph that, um, let's say I want to do offset yield. So now I've already got my yield strength. I'm just going to click on the curve. And so my offset yield is automatically coming up. And so, um, just like before, I can put in a tolerance, I can uh, pin it to the graph, take it off. Here, I've got offset yield. This is going to be very common for customers that are uh, doing uh, material tests on sample, or excuse me, metal samples. Uh, additionally, we'll have customers that um, their initial curve isn't um, uh, very smooth at the start. It's got some uh, peaks and valleys, and so what they'll use offset yield for is uh, doing an offset to get repeatable data. Um, so if I want to do point 0.2, I can do that. I can do point 0.5, and um, it will adjust automatically and update. Now, one thing is, um, let's say that I want to get something along the curve, and I'm not really sure where exactly it needs to be. I can use uh, my scope tool, which is up here. And so I can move this anywhere along the line that I want. So if I see something that's interesting and I want to know the data at that exact point, I can drive it along however I want. You can use the mouse. You can use the touch screen. Now let's say that um, 
I want to find an existing, or excuse me, a piece of data at a specific point, 4.125%. I can quickly type that in there and it's automatically going to snap there. And um, just like we talked about before, it's automatically updating for all of the different test points there. Um, so, you know, if I delete that, I don't want it, that's fine. I can take it off. Two months from now, if I want to come back in and add it, all I'm going to do is click right here, type in the value I want, and it snaps to it automatically. So um, I've got lots of data and everything looks pretty good here. Uh, one thing that you look at here is F. So F is for a formula. And um, you'll see the X's are listed there is because it's out of scope, right? I wrote that formula, deleted a bunch of data, and now I want to recalculate it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back up. And so um, I can use this to calculate uh, data using anything I want, whether it's a manual input or whether I'm taking um, data from another one of the columns. So let's say that um, I have an old test and um, I always report uh, my yield as, you know, as half, right? So all I got to do is click over here in half and then I'll just use my divided by two and I'm done. So that formula is automatically going to populate there. If I wanted to do a coefficient using the temperature and humidity in the room uh, or use any other parameters where an operator might manually input that, all you've got to do is we can use a comment field, input that data, and then at the end of the test we can use our formula tool and we'd be able to calculate it. So uh, we already have some powerful tools to perform uh, advanced tests and um, collect all kinds of common data, but if there's something that's not standard, we still have the ability to calculate that automatically using this formula tool. So this is a, uh, a really popular um, feature. A lot of our customers find a use for it. So I'm going to delete that, and uh, now I am ready to um, start looking at what data I'm going to export. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to look at multiple runs compared next to each other. So I'm going to click over here. All right, and you'll see. Uh -oh. Here we go. All right, great. So now I've got it so that the different runs will show up next to each other. And so I can see the colors are listed over here, black, green, and uh, purple. Okay, so as I'm going through, I can see the different curves. I can look at it. Um, let's say that I want to add a con in here, and I want to point out the fact that this straw um, came out of the fixture early. And then I'm going to go through, and since it's a green line, I'm going to change the color to green. And now I'm done. Um, as you can see over here, I've got this plus tool. And so what I can do with the plus tool is I can go in and I can select and deselect the data that I do and I don't want. So I'm going to go through here, and I want to put in the time that I perform the test. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff. If you want to add comments, you can put them in there. Uh, you can have it so that you're collecting data. Let's say that you want to have multiple inputs that are used for your formula, uh, but you don't want to export them as inputs. You just want the result of the formula. That would be an example of where you would do that. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and hit my check button. So um, you have your quick access to data down here, max, min, range, average, standard deviation, your SBC data. Um, but if uh, you want to go ahead and export everything as a result, um, I can have it so that the system automatically exports a CSV file. Here I can click on my data export option. I've got a CSV. I can copy to a clipboard. I can export the graph as a bitmap, and I can export raw data. Uh, some of our customers will have an ERP system or some other software that will request a raw data stream descent. So that's how we would be able to do that. So um, everybody knows what an Excel spreadsheet looks like. So instead of looking at that, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this in a print report. All right, so I'm going to put it on uh, my desktop. Okay, so I've got it printed out here. So I open up my PDF, 
And so uh, I come in here, you'll see that it's got the uh, name of the operator. So uh, the software gives you the capability of having different uh, logins. So you can have everyone type in their name or what shift it was, uh, however you want to format it. Um, here underneath is company name. Uh, you can even put in your logo. So if you want to put your logo or your customer's logo, you have the ability of customizing the report like that. Uh, I've got my time and date of uh, when the test was exported. So I've got my graph. You can see that I've even got my comment here from where I added uh, that it came out of the grips early. And then scrolling down, as you can see, that you've got all of your data collected. So uh, the software is extremely powerful. Um, going back in here, you can go in and uh, with our settings tool, you can go and change where uh, you'd have the file sent and everything like that. So you can have it to say that the system is automatic not only in its operation, but also in its data output. So stepping back and kind of doing a quick overview, um, we've gone through force testing, material testing, we've performed different kinds of tests. So I think that uh, it's worth noting um, that there are different uh, fixtures and grips that are compatible with these systems. So um, right here we've got some vice action grips. Those are compression platens. You'll hear about other kinds of grips like pneumatic grips, which are used a lot in uh, low force tensile applications or using slippery fabrics. So we'll use pneumatic grips, which use an airline and a pressure regulator to apply a constant force. And you can use them with different, what are called jaw faces, which are the uh, part of the fixture that actually touches the part. You can get serrated faces, smooth faces, rubber faces, um, not faces for uh, cylindrical parts, uh, rubberized um, wave faces, all kinds of different configurations built for different samples. Uh, at higher capacities, we'll see that, in, especially in metal testing, customers will use wedge action grips, uh, which will apply a constant load using spring force um, to pull a sample apart. And uh, we've also got rollers, so a lot of customers that are doing peel tests will use a roller. They'll take their uh, whether it's plastic film or fabric, put it under the rollers, uh, which will hold it in place as it's pulled apart. And then uh, bend fixtures. So sometimes you'll hear about a test called flexural modulus. How resistant is a part to being bent? And um, so what we'll use is a uh, bend fixture, and we'll actually set the uh, the three points apart at a specific distance so that we can repeatedly set it up ac across different machines and get repeatable data well. So um, one thing that we always suggest to customers is when looking at a piece of equipment, understanding the volume of inspection that you're going to be doing, uh, the capacity that you're going to need, and uh, fixtures are extremely important, right? If you can't present the sample to the sensor, you're not going to get accurate data. So whether it's a little handheld force gauge like this or a material testing system, it's very important to look at your different fixturing options and find the uh, right product for the application. Uh, Starrett offers an extensive catalog. I think it's about 150 pages of different grips and uh, fixtures for all kinds of different tests. And we have instances where even with that many options, the customer don't the customer doesn't find exactly what they're looking for. So uh, we have an engineering group here at J.A. King that will uh, design and build uh, custom fixtures for you. We've done everything as simple as a uh, V-block with some rubber straps on it to uh, pull the cap off of the foam cleanser at a specific angle, all the way through complex testing systems such as an environmental chamber that uh, uh, maintains temperature and humidity so that a medical device manufacturer could perform a test and simulate it as though it was in a uh, patient's arm uh, while the test was being performed. Um, on our advanced systems, we have uh, what's called Automation Builder, and Automation Builder allows us to automatically integrate with systems such as stack lights, um, uh, loading and unloading uh, systems. It could be, you know, just a rotary fixture or whatever. Uh, some customers will have a part that when it breaks, it has the potential of splintering and sending shards uh, out, which could be dangerous. So we'll often build a uh, splinter shield. And the automation builder is great for those applications because it will allow you to um, uh, make it so that the machine only runs whenever the uh, uh, splinter shield is closed. So that's a great way of uh, keeping your operator safe and uh, making sure it's automatic so that there's no risk that they forget. So uh, now that we've gone through the main part of our presentation, we're going to have some uh, questions. It looks like we've already got a few that have come in. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started. 
Okay, so the first question we have is, uh, can we get a demo with our parts, our parts being that the uh, customer wants to know if, if we can do a demonstration using their parts. So, yeah, so uh, Jerry King owns demo equipment, and so we can uh, even come to your site and perform a test. Uh, our demo machines are typically in the 100-pound capacity range, um, so if your part is underneath that and we have the appropriate grips for it, we can do a test with your part. If not, uh, often what we'll do is we'll bring in a similar part. So, for example, a customer that's pulling apart a copper tube, uh, we could use a plastic straw, and you'd be surprised on how similar the tests are going to look. So it gives a really good idea of uh, what software looks like, how everything operates. Um, Additionally, if you're not sure about the capacity of your part, you can give it to us. We have a 50 kilonewton machine um, that uh, gives us 11,000 pounds of capacity in testing, and um, we can pull that part and determine the exact rate point. So if it breaks at 1,000 pounds, we would know that we need a machine less than the full uh, 11,000 pounds capacity, but obviously above our 100 pounds. So we've got the ability of doing uh, demonstrations, um, live web demonstrations or recorded web demonstrations using our bigger machine. Um, and that reminds me, talking about the uh, uh, advanced system here for our uh, advanced force testing and for material testing. Um, we've got a broad range of products. We have the F and M series frames. So those frames come with a uh, granite base, which gives us uh, thermal stability, as well as a bottom heavy base so that we get linear accuracy in case the part breaks at a higher point up on the column. Um, We've got a precision ball screw in there driven by a motor that has speed ranges all the way as slow as one thousandth of an inch per minute all the way through 60 inches a minute. Um, the F series uh, frames, which is the F and D and the F and S, have a 20 micron rotary encoder for our uh, position accuracy. Uh, all of the machines are compatible with multiple load cells. You can use any load cell that is at or below the capacity of the frame. Um, the M-series will have a 5-micron rotary encoder, so FMS is force, material, or force measurement system, NMS is the material measurement system, and so that 5-micron rotary encoder coupled with the uh, input of the material dimension gives us high accuracy on the stress and strain calculations along with others. Um, where in the past we might have required an extensometer or something like that. That 5 micron rotary encoder uh, gives us really good data really quickly and automatically. Uh, we've talked about the FMD and the NMD. Those are the dual column machines. So uh, beginning at 10,000 newtons and up, uh, stare at sells the machines. It's about 2,000 pounds. We'll uh, sell the machine in a dual column setup. Um, uh, L2, which is our more basic tablet-mounted uh, force software, uh, which has some of the automation capabilities that we don't have on L1 for more complex tests, uh, is available on all frames. Um, you'll see L2 Plus on a lot of the FMS series and the FMB series, and then a lot of the M series machines are sold with L3. So um, the load cells, uh, again, as we talked about, range anywhere from uh, two pounds of force through uh, the capacity 50 kilonewtons or 11,000 pounds of force. The FLC load cells are um, available at 0.1% of capacity. The M, so just like we had the M, M, uh, S for material testing, the MLC load cell intended for material testing is 0.5% uh, of reading. The smallest machine here, our FMS 500, um, is going to have a 15-inch capacity uh, for vertical travel. And then we go all the way up to the dual column machines, which will have 44 inches of uh, testing capacity. Um, automation builder, which is where we can integrate with some, you know, stack lights, tolerancing, uh, loading and unloading fixtures or uh, automated devices, and doing some of the calculation is an add-on, which is available for all kinds of different machines. So. Um, moving on to the next question, uh, are these benchtop or floor models? So all of the models are intended to be benchtop. So whether it's a unit like this where I can quickly load and unload the part at your standard table height, or if it's a dual column where you might look at a lower bench, um, you still want to put it on top of a table or a bench. Uh, we have a lot of customers that provide their own. Some customers will ask us to provide that for them uh, so we can help you find the right bench and provide it for you if you want to keep everything on one order. Can I put this on a production force? That's a great question. So um, 
as is. This is perfectly set for a quality lab, and then we have a lot of customers that use this equipment as is uh, for the production environment. We talked earlier about a lot of the mechanical features that not only give us the added accuracy, um, but they're also very robust. So these are intended for a manufacturing environment. Um, if you have an environment that might be a little more harsh than what the standard setup is, we have built all kinds of enclosures uh, and other configurations so that you can get your testing performed as close to production um, as possible. The next question is, um, is service provided by J.A. King or Starrett? So uh, here at J.A. King, we do everything we can to support what we sell. So our uh, service department is capable of doing um, installations, calibrations, and repair. Uh, we also have our own staff, which provides software training. That's everything from the handheld gauge L1 through L3. Um, our engineered solutions division will help us with any automation or custom projects, and they'll be able to support it as well. Uh, in instances where a machine might be damaged beyond field repair, uh, Starrett in Massachusetts, where these uh, gauges are made, um, has a, uh, a full service department, so would be able to send the equipment back up to Massachusetts, and uh, the team up there would be able to help. So it's great knowing that uh, we've got an American manufacturer with staff uh, here on the East Coast that can provide support to our customers locally. Uh, can I hook this into a PLC? Yes. So um, we do have systems that are capable uh, on FMS and MMS frames uh, that we can integrate into a PLC. You just need to provide us with uh, what kind of PLC that you have and what kind of inter interface that you would like. Uh, multiple users, good question. Multiple users, can I have a password protected restricted access for certain users? So yes. So um, on my machine I've showed some of the data analysis and some of the uh, test creating and editing. You can have it so that someone can go in and use all the functions and features on the machine. Um, or you can also have it so that operators only see what they need, right? They can select the test, they can hit start, the data is going to be output automatically. Um, so there's varying levels. You can have it so that it is password protected or not. Um, and you can lock tests so that those tests can only be edited by the person who created them. So. Looks like we don't have any more questions. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined us today. Um, if you have any more questions, would like a demonstration or anything else, please reach out to your local application specialist. Um, you can also get some contact information at jaking.com and look at your local service branch and you'll be able to find uh, contact information there as well. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, we'll be doing more webinars. Uh, and all kinds of different metrology, and we look to do some more advanced webinars on force and material testing. Thank you so much for your time. We look forward to seeing you soon.